All right, so what people need to understand is that the body doesn't just have waste in the center of the intestine. It permeates the entire system. So we only begin the waste removal process when we start to remove what's sitting in the center of our intestine. Then we get to the, the much deeper waste that's, that the body is completely porous. Everything moves through the body. So, um, you know, we have, we have uh, this whole new lease on life when we're not sitting baking in our own waste. It's really what's happening. People need to understand that. That's why they're sick. That's why they have acne. That's why they have headaches. That's why they have joint problems. That's why they have breakouts everywhere. That's why they don't sleep well. That's why they have all these bowel issues. Um, you know, it's all connected to this waste in the body that shouldn't be there. It's again, it's, it's a saturation. It sounds horrible, but it's true. It's a saturation in one's own excrement. And that's why if you, you know, you wake up in the morning, you haven't eaten for whatever, six, eight, ten hours, there's, there's so much uh, noxious, so much of a noxious smell because the body's been cleaning house. It's trying to get the stuff out and it, it has no exit. It's like Jean-Paul Sartre's no exit. It's an, a waste existential dilemma. <laughs> there's, there's no exit. So we need to create that exit. And we create that exit through the intestine, which is so ready, willing, and able, and delighted to give up its waste through that channel. It's made for it. It's completely made for it. And, um, and it's not meant to be sitting there full of waste. It's meant to be empty. Now, we're living in a modern world. We're coming in with defunct organs, with genes that are a tired lineage that's tired and worn down, been, has been beaten down and has been distorted, unfortunately, because of improper living for generations. So we come in with that already weakened system, and then what do we do? We put substances inside that were never meant for the human body to begin with. So it's a, it's a double whammy. It's like saying, okay, you're the weak one, so you, you do the hard work. You would never do that. So we're, we're, giving the hard, we're giving impossible work to an organism that is already so severely compromised. What's gonna happen? That organism is not gonna be sustainable. It's not gonna be energized. It's not gonna be happy. You know, and what happens if, if, if this implicates um, our sleep, if it, um, if it has a negative effect on our sleeping patterns? Well, if we don't produce the necessary melatonin at night when it's dark and we're sleeping, then we're not gonna have its sister hormone, serotonin, appear the next day, serotonin makes us happy. So lack of sleep, it's gonna make us happy, but why are we not sleeping? Well, our bowel is full of stuff that doesn't, it's affecting our head and it's making us jittery and it's, 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 and then we're taking substances to either help break, give us energy or calm us down. And the whole um, pituitary system goes haywire. All because why? Because we're, we're sitting with this distress in our midsection. So, you know, it's simple things like that. A clean bowel equates to a good night's sleep. A good night's sleep equates to happiness the next day. I have a life that's manageable despite the intense stress I'm met with every day from external circumstances that I can deal with like I'm on the battlefield with these really nifty swords because in here, everything is good. Everything feels great. And, you know, and when I began this journey, when I was 24, 25, my, my body, my mind, my spirit was in such a state of distress. Physically, I was totally deteriorating. I carried way too much extra weight for my frame. I was miserable about that, and I, I was incredibly frustrated. I had so much cellulite, and I thought that was going to be a lifelong thing. I, was, I thought I was going to spend my life hating my body and battling with my body. And it was so depressing, because, you know, I, we, look, it used to be, I was able to say I grew up in a very image conscious place, I grew up in Los Angeles, but now the whole world is so image conscious, so it's not even about that. It's like everybody's feeling this pressure to, uh, to look a certain way, and yet the, um, the options for consumption and norms around consumption are such that y you would never be able to look, even remotely, that the way you might like to, or the way, the way you're being encouraged to look if you consume those things. It's impossible. It's another one of those dichotomies that the world throws at you and says, and then, and then you have models who say, oh yeah, I eat hamburgers all the time, you know? <laughs> and, and no, you don't, you know, <laughs> and you're just, you're just wanting to act. It's, it's, like, it's like girls who act like they like football, you know? No, you don't. You actually don't like sitting there watching football, but you're going to act like you are because you think the boys are going to like that, you know? You're going to act like you can eat hamburgers and stay really skinny because you think 
that that's, um, that's like the, un the unattainable, so it makes you special. And we know that hamburgers don't make you skinny. We know that most girls, some girls legitimately do like watching American football and rugby, but most girls don't really enjoy it that much. So let's, let's get honest, let's be authentic, let's not try to pretend, let's not put all this artificiality on ourselves and realize that, that that artificiality that we put inside and on ourselves is what's making us so sick. Even the stuff that we're putting on our skin, we have to recognize that the things that we're spraying around us, you know, even um, going to the beach, when I, when I see people spraying all this sunscreen on themselves, it's all chemicals, it's so bad, and they're breathing it, it's going through their lungs. It's, um, you know, it's horrendous, but, um, but that, we can get rid of the residue of the chemicals from things like that through colonics. And when you have your home colonic unit, you can, you know, you keep the consistency going to the point where whenever you have time, you can actually use it. So you can use it once a week, you can use it six times a week, you can use it, you know, when, as it suits your schedule and it's, as it suits your goals. So if you're suffering acutely from heavy metal poisoning or radiation or you have been diagnosed with something, you know, like the big C, you can get right to work turning that around because that's just, those are symptoms of saturation of waste. Those are symptoms of having something in the body that should never have been there to begin with. But radiation is going to lodge itself in the waste. It's going to go in, it's going to be in the tissue which has the, the, the waste component in it. So when we, when we expunge this waste from the tissue, we're going to expunge the radiation and the heavy metals right there with it. So it is actually a chelation process. Chelation basically means the removal of substances that shouldn't be in the body, especially things like radiation and heavy metals. So it's, it's, the, it's the pulling out, it's the removing, it's the, um, it's the suctioning out of. And what people need to understand is you don't actually, you don't remove waste until you remove the waste. You don't remove it by taking charcoal pills, tablets. You don't remove it by eating a lot of cilantro. It's a big thing. Like, oh, heavy metals eat lots of cilantro. I mean, any dark leafy green is going to help alkalinize, magnetize the radiation, the heavy metals up and out of the cells and tissues. But that isn't cleansing. That is prepping for a cleanse. That is gathering. It's putting the garbage in the bags. We have to get it out. We have to get it out of the house into the, the and then, you know, and then <laughs> into the great beyond, hopefully, you know, not to, to create. I mean, this, this is the thing. <laughs> we have to change our lives so that we're not, so once we take out this noxious stuff, and we, we, can, we don't keep damaging the earth with what we're consuming. So then, but see, here's the beautiful thing. It becomes so easy to eat cleanly once you've cleared your intestine. I liken it to people who tell me that, um, for example, they were a smoker, but when they got into yoga, they stopped smoking. They didn't try to, but something about this connection with the breath, it just made no sense anymore. They didn't have the same compulsion to smoke. So um, in the same way, when we're making the effort and having the success of removing all this waste matter, we're not going to have the compulsion to go and put that same stuff inside of us. And we're also not going to resonate with those things that cause so much damage. It's, it's going to be, because our palate is going to change. As we remove all this waste, we, we get rid of the addiction with it. So in this waste, we have radiation, we have heavy metals, we have the chemicals, we have the addictive substances, we have the pathogens, which are what drive the desire to keep consuming the things like the sugar and the alcohol and the recreational drugs and the, the and that wind up giving you the need uh, for the pharmaceutical drugs to you know help address them when all they're doing is creating more imbalance. So we remove the residue of all of those things in the colon irrigation process. It's extraordinary. And once you realize, you think, oh my gosh, I can actually fix all of these problems by getting this waste out of my system and it's all in my hands. I can do it on my timetable in the privacy of my own space and I can watch fun YouTube videos while I do it, you know, or, or play my favorite tunes and I can watch in real time, I can watch and experience this stuff leaving my body. It's like standing in your house and watching, you know, those shows where they come in and they renovate your house. It's like that. It's like you're just watching it. It's happening and you don't have to wait for it. You, you have it right away, you know, and, and then that day, you're going to live a cleaner day. You're not going to want to have this other stuff that you used to have in your life. It's not going to be that hard for you. It's, you might, at four o'clock in the afternoon, if you're, you know, in the, in the corporate world and, or wherever you are in an office and the, the cookies come out and the hot chocolate comes out and everyone's getting their, their, their third latte for the day or whatever it is, 
or the, the M and M's and the gummy bears, and because everyone wants that that stimulation to keep going and to feel, um, you know, like something, some even some pleasure, some because because you know the, these these spaces are not where we're supposed to be spending our day to begin with. Um, you won't feel like you have to have that. You won't have to overcome this very difficult um, uh, temptation. It won't be a temptation for you. They'll be like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, and then you'll have, you'll have something else. You'll have your tea. You'll have your carrots. You'll have um, your goat cheese. You'll have your avocado sandwich. You'll have something else that you, know, you can arrange for yourself, but you won't have the addiction where you're feeling like you're, so, you're, you're, you're struggling to avoid something that shouldn't be in, in yourself at, uh, to begin with. So it makes it easy to, um, to overcome temptation. It makes it easy, not even to overcome it, it makes it easy to walk away from temptation and not repeat the same cycles and patterns in your life that are killing you, that are dep depressing you, that are making your hormones secrete poorly and giving you all sorts of, you know, like, not, it's, we don't just have male pattern baldness anymore, now we have female pattern baldness. This is a problem. This is showing the body is speaking. The body doesn't like the saturation of waste. This is a, this is a symptom of a, land, a body that's become a landfill, a body that's had to compromise its real estate that should be this florid garden for this stuff that can't leave because it was never designed to be in the body to begin with. The body doesn't know what to do with it. So it just stores it and it says, well, maybe, maybe tomorrow I'll get a chance to do something with it. Maybe. But no, tomorrow you wind up putting more, the body winds up having to contend with a whole new onslaught of things it has to deal with. So it shoves it down. It's, it's, like, it's like someone who takes on an you know, office manager job and they really, you know, I don't know, want to be an artist or an actor. And so the paperwork just keeps on piling up and they're like, Poof. okay, we'll deal with that. Maybe tomorrow, you know? It's, it's like the body is not... Is, does not want to procrastinate. It really wants to clean and clear, and this is what we get to see when we give it the opportunity. We create the circumstances, the conditions for cleansing, and the body's on it. It's like it is. It's on like Donkey Kong. Right? It's like it's it's like ready to go. It, it was made for this. It was it, there. There um, to, there are aspects to the blueprint of our body that are made for cleansing. It's all it wants to do. It's like people talk about the uh, cannabinoid receptors and why we're supposed to be inclined to, uh, why there's a strong connection between um, the human body and the cannabis plant. It's the same thing with cleansing. It's, it's just made for it. And we, we get those receptors going when we invite the pathways to clear and cleanse. Primarily, we do that with the large intestine through colon irrigation. We also do it through the mouth, through a tongue scraping, use getting a metal tongue scraper, and the more you use your tongue scraper, the more waste that comes out of your mouth, which is actually a good thing, believe it or not. It means that the mouth is, like, is able to get rid of waste that would otherwise cause dental issues and halitosis and uh, throat and digestive issues because all that waste is constantly moving up and down, the pathogens moving up and down. And we do it through our skin. We, um, you know, if, we, if, we, if we know how to care for our skin by body brushing, by using scrubbing gloves, by using organic soaps and nothing but and very, very pure oils on the skin, like um, coconut oil. We enable the skin to be, the, well, it is the largest organ, but it, we enable it to be the great second largest eliminative organ, which it's meant to be second to the colon. And suddenly, you know, we're, we're moving this waste out. We're, and what happens when we move the waste out? We become young again. What happens with that house when it gets to get, when the waste comes out? The walls aren't, um, it, it aren't stinking anymore. Everything has a chance to, if, if, you, if you think about a house that's alive, I know it's, it's not exactly like the same, but you know, a house that has consciousness and knows what to do, you know, it will start to, to clear and clean. So you know, we have this great opportunity to do so. It's just a matter of, of getting your head around the fact that water needs to go. I call it up the wazoo. And it's funny because um, um, azu comes from azure. And, um, and so I love the end water, so we have the wazoo. <laughs> so I thought that was a great connection. Um, so we, we get the water up the wazoo, and we reconstitute the waste that's sitting there waiting to go, that's clogging and blocking everything and giving you head fog and making you, uh, you know, de-energizing de you more and more every day and messing with your hormone receptors and your hormone releases, secretions, um, so that you can't sleep properly. All this gets fixed just by emptying what's sitting in the large intestine. And then we just keep going with that. And we just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse, literally rinse and repeat. 
and, and then you can watch the transformation. Don't take my word for it. Do it. Watch it happen. It's, it, it's universal. It happens the same way with everyone. It's like, it would be like, you know, a, one dishwasher or a dishwasher only working for 50% of the families. It doesn't work like that. You know, the, a good dishwasher, a good colon cleansing unit works for everyone. The concept and the application, if done properly, it works for everyone because that's just the way things work. You clean something, it upgrades, it gets better, it, it's, um, it's more useful, it's, it's, it's no longer, you know, if you think about the term functional versus dysfunctional, what it means is, is it useful? What does it mean to be useful? It means that something is upgraded, it actually becomes something that can be used to improve your life or someone else's life or the life of the community. So what, what we're walking around with in the modern world are these dysfunctional bodies. They're not useful. They're not acting for our highest good or for the highest good of others and the community. They're actually bringing everything down. So by cleaning them, by cleansing, we actually take a dysfunctional organism and we make it functional. And then what comes next is you know, beyond expectation because our unique essence has something to bring the world. But if it's underneath all this, you know, this, this landfill stuff, we never actually get to our true essence. So we wind up acting out to artificial personalities, these aspects of ourselves that we're, we were never born with. We, can't, we, we develop them to contend with the world. We develop them as um, a, a kind of um, crutches and aspects for dealing with this artificial, these artificial interactions we're forced to have all day long, every day, because this world does not serve the, um, the, the natural blueprint of life, the network of life. It serves the artificial, which is why everyone is so suppressed and, um, and confined to limitations that are, feel so uncomfortable, but we don't know what to do about them. Well, here's one thing you can do about it. You can start releasing all that artificiality that you had to flood your human real estate with and then see what happens to you next. See what you tap into. See how beautiful that fauna and flora and natural essence is that comes through and you'll actually start to understand why in the Buddhist philosophy we nod to each other's divinity and consider ourselves to be the embodiment of something very, very holy.